questions? Okay, so I know some of you. Uh, I don't know some of you. The point is, um, you already know about me. I don't have to make a long presentation. Uh, but in 2016, October of 2016, I opened a charity at 18 for serving the populations of Chorezm and Karakalpa. Is anyone here from Chorezm and Karakalpa? No. Oh, you are. Where are you from? In which town or city? From Rukinch. Um, so anyways, uh, the point is, is I'm really no different uh, than any of you, honestly. Um, I have two advantages. Obviously, I know English as a native language and I grew up in America, which obviously is a big plus in terms of getting funding. Um, but uh, the other thing is that I have four to five years of experience developing grants, making projects, right? Um, and in fact, in terms of making projects for different issues in Uzbekistan, you guys have an advantage. Because there's a lot of funding right now coming from my country, the US, from uh, different grant sources, from different foundations, specifically for Uzbeks, for Uzbek local organizers, for local Uzbek organizations, for Uzbek youth, to make their own projects, right? So, um, the problem is, is if you're going to apply for grant funding or you're going to approach a, a um, foundation that is um, not based in Uzbekistan, you're going to have to present your ideas in English and in a very specific format, right? So USA, Eurasian Foundation. Um, I've submitted grants to all these different organizations. USA, Eurasian Foundation, my university, Coca-Cola Foundation. Um, and from these different groups, we've managed to gather about $60,000. I've also submitted grants to Russian uh, funders. Um, so, again, I already presented about our charity, so that doesn't matter that much. Um, what's going on with this little yellow square at the bottom? Projected three deals. Okay, let's hope that's not a problem. Um, but the point is, as you see right here, uh, my Instagram. The reason I'm giving my Instagram to you right now is because at the end of this exercise, you are going to develop your own project ideas, right? And I would like you guys to send me your ideas to me, so that later on, if you have some good ideas, I can actually share those ideas with funders. Maybe we can develop a project together, okay? So the goal of this next hour, or hour and a half, is that all of you, in groups of three or four, develop your own project ideas, okay? Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we can go a few slides down. Um, you know about the Aerosol Crisis, all this is unnecessary ecology, we know blah 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 blah. I want to tell you, just to show a little thing about our charity. Keep going here, this slide. So, just so you know what I have achieved using grant funding. With grant funding, um, not only have we managed to work in Uzbekistan, but also in Russia, in, um, in Serbia, in, uh, in Russia, in the US, of course. Um, and uh, we have planted more than 5,000 fruit trees. We've installed uh, four water filters, three drip line systems, two water pumps. We've worked with about nine schools. We've done uh, different uh, cultural uh, events um, and so forth. We've also, during the pandemic, we didn't have the chance to work in Uzbekistan, but we partnered with a Russian uh, charity to do a trash cleaning marathon where we collected 50 tons of trash in 17 cities in Russia and the US. Right? So, this is all with money given to us by different foundations, again. Um, so it's all just about presenting your ideas in a beautiful way. That's what gets you money to implement your own ideas. Okay, let's keep going. This is not necessary. Now we can keep moving. Next one. Eco delegates. Okay, so anyone can win funding for an ecological project, right? Now it's your chance to put together a mini project that addresses a cause your passion is about. The next slide. So how are we going to do this? So the first step, of course, is identifying a problem, right? Um, I would like to ask that all of you right now get into groups of three or four people. Okay, so we have three people. 
people here, maybe you know you guys, you four can work together, you three. So guys, get into groups of three or four people, and then find one problem, a specific problem. It can be an ecological, social problem. It can be um, an economic problem in terms of helping the elderly or veterans. Right? It can be about education, IT. Find one problem in one community in Uzbekistan. Okay? So. It has to be something specific to one city, one town, okay? Identify that problem, and then try to find one root cause of that problem, okay? Now, um, we should all immediately go to the next slide. Can we go to the next slide? I'm sorry about the formatting. It's a bit weird when we change computers. Um, here's my example. So, what was the problem that we chose here? We chose the problem, this is from a real grant that we developed in 2019, and we got funding from the Coca-Cola Foundation. Our problem was this. Can someone read this? Right? Um, so our friend from uh, Corezim, can you tell me about the problems with anemia and with salty water uh, in Corezim? Who is from Corezim again? Stand up and then share a little. What's the, what, what are the issues that Corazon is facing in terms of anemia, salty water, nutrition? Well, we got, we got high salt content in water. Water pollution, right? So because of the desiccation of water resources, once water, groundwater gets to Corazon, it has a high salt content, right? Ecology is not good. Right? So the problem is that trees can't grow and um, also the water is very salty, the groundwater. Do you know what groundwater is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Central Pakistan and uh, Torazan is a water is uh, hot. So the water boils and this is so salty. Uh, boils and we know the air is uh, like a as you say before, clean and moves everywhere. So while uh, boiling the salty water, it affects uh, to the uh, breaths uh, that we uh, take in. The air. The air, yeah. Uh, of course, it, it, uh, it uh, affects, the influence the quality of the air. So that's the cause of energy. That's, well, <laughs> what do I forget? From what I understand, right? The, the, the cause of high anemia, especially in villages in Karakalpak, San Andreasen, is that the groundwater is salty, right? And uh, there's high salinity in the groundwater, so there's not much drinking resources. When you don't have good drinking water, it starts to affect your blood, and that causes anemia. Also, a lack of nutrition, right? So, what did we do? We identified a problem high levels of anemia, and we said the root cause of it. The main cause of that problem is high salt content in their water supply, right? Notice the next thing we did. Let's look at this goal again. What else is here? What's going back to the, to the previous slide that we just had? Yeah, no, 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 the other one. Uh-huh. What about this green thing? Why is this green part important? Who is being affected? Who is being affected? Um, also, you don't see it here, but I could have said in Khwarezm and Karakalpakstan. Why is that important? If I said uh, high salt content in the water supply in Khwarezm and Karakalpakstan, why is that important? Because we are targeting the area. The area, right? Yeah, yeah. So look what's very important. We don't just identify a problem with a root cause of salty water. But we are very specific. We are not helping everyone. No, we said we want to work at schools with children ages 6 to 18 in the resident park of So we have a specific where and what. Right? Where and who. Where and who. Sorry. So those are all the elements of identifying a problem. Once you identify a problem, then you create a goal. Right? You create a solution. 
a solution that addresses the root cause of the problem. So, um, we don't need the board. But if you imagine it, right, here's our, here's our little picture. Here's the problem. Here's the root cause that causes the problem. And here's the solution that addresses the root cause, right? And we want to be specific. So again, here's our, can someone read the goal? Volunteer. High level. Yeah, go ahead. We request, uh, the goal is to tackle the high level menu. No, read the goal on the screen. We request, we request, we request uh, some amount of dollars to install the rewards osmosis filters at school facing high salt content in their water supply in Uzbekistan. The filter provides children age 6 to 18 with free desalinated water, which help, which will help pack up high level of anemia. Anemia, right? And you guys understand what reverse osmosis filters are? Do you know? Is it the type of desalinating? Yeah, it's a desalinating filter. Yeah. Exactly. Is it cheap or expensive? It's expensive. Expensive, right? The cheapest one costs two thousand dollars, if not two thousand five hundred. Okay, so that's why we're requesting money. We're requesting money to install these filters that will be able to remove salty water that is the cause of anemia for a specific group. That is schools with children aged six to eighteen in Horizon Karakol. Right? That was our grant. This is exactly what we showed the Coca Cola Foundation when they gave us fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. So, now it's your turn. In your groups, choose a specific problem for a specific group of people in a specific place and find the root cause and then suggest a solution. Okay? Did you guys understand? Any questions? Questions? No? Okay, take five to seven minutes, get in groups and start discussing, alright? Uh, and I'll stop you in five to seven minutes. Thank you very much.